Right. Thank you for joining us for the last session of today. My name is Andrew Mo, and I'm a product manager uh, on the mobile and platform team at Oculus. Since we're about to head to a happy hour soon, there's a good chance you'll probably not remember much of this talk. <laughs> but if there's one thing to take away from this session, it's that the web is already a big deal in VR. And it will play an important role in shaping its future. Since our first talk at OC3 almost two years ago, we've been working hard to bring the very best of web and VR. And I'm excited to give you an update of what we've been working on and give you a sense of what's to come. We began this journey when we first started to build a VR-first browser. The Oculus browser was launched on Gear VR last year and is available on the Oculus Go and will launch with a new Oculus Quest. It's tightly integrated with our mobile system runtime and benefits from both its performance and visual clarity. More importantly, it can seamlessly jump between traditional 2D web content and immersive web experiences that take over your whole field of view. In terms of users, the Oculus browser has been one of our most popular apps on the platform. In fact, more than two-thirds of Oculus Go's monthly active users are also actively using Oculus Browser. And with the near infinite amount of content that's available on the internet, people are spending a significant amount of time browsing the web in VR, making Oculus Browser also one of the top apps by time spent on our platform. But while it's easy to imagine people only browsing 2D web pages on giant virtual screens wrapped around them, our users are actually spending a substantial amount of time in the immersive web, which is pretty impressive when you consider that web VR is a relatively new standard that is rapidly evolving into web XR. In the coming months, as we work with more partners to activate new forms of immersive web content, and we begin to feature experiences in the new dynamic new tab page within the browser, we expect time in the immersive web to increase significantly. There's a wide range of immersive web experiences that are out there today that have been built to take advantage of VR. Today, I want to show you just three noteworthy examples as they help highlight the unique advantages that the web can bring to VR. The first category of content is what we refer to as interactive 360 experiences. In this case, we have a virtual tour of the National Gallery in London where you can explore different wings of the gallery and look up detailed information of each painting. For those consuming the experience outside of VR, the 2D screen on your mobile phone or desktop PC act as a magic window into the virtual world, allowing you to navigate the experience by moving your phone or using a mouse. But the best way to experience the content is in headset, especially a lightweight and fully untethered device such as the Oculus Go. What's noteworthy about these types of content is how easy they are to create. Using frameworks such as React 360, anyone with the ability to create a basic website will be able to build an interactive virtual tour. And these experiences help developers more effectively tell a story by transporting people to a place and giving them the agency to explore on their own. As a result, we're seeing a lot of interest that span a range of industries, from travel partners looking to create interactive 360 listings, to advertisers looking to create more differentiated campaigns, to news publishers wanting to supplement their coverage with an immersive deep dive. The next category of immersive web content is user-generated content. At F8 this year, we announced a new and exciting form of media called 3D Photos that's launching later this year. It allows anyone with a dual camera smartphone to capture stunning photos that have depth information built in. When scrolling through the news feed on your phone or computer, these photos come to life and look completely different from what we typically see. And to fully appreciate this type of content, you'll need to check it out in VR, especially using a headset like the Rift, which has a full range of tracking allowing you to step into each 3D photo as if you're in the room where it's been taken. This is also a great example of the concept of progressive enhancement being extended into VR. The same piece of content without any modification will run across a wide range of devices, 
it looks pretty good in 2D on your phone, is better in an Oculus Go with three degrees of freedom, and is at its best in the Rift with six degrees of freedom. In addition, we're really excited about the prospect of bringing into VR a ton of immersive content being created by your friends. Before I introduce the final form of immersive web content, it's uh, important to call out that when Oculus Quest launches next year, it will have full support for WebVR and WebXR, which makes it the first headset to enable untethered room-scale tracking for a wide range of immersive web content. And a great example of how the immersive web can take advantage of room scale is Hubs by Mozilla, a fully 3D web-based experience that lets you get together with your friends in a virtual space using just your browser. For those on mobile and PC, the experience will feel a bit like playing a first-person game with on-screen controls that let you move around and interact with the virtual space. And when you launch hubs in VR, it's really easy to get lost in the experience, especially on a device like Oculus Quest. With a large enough play area, users can walk around the entire virtual space without a need for any in-game controls like teleportation, preserving the sense of immersion. More importantly, friends that you interact with in hubs doesn't need to have a VR headset. By simply sharing a link, you can invite anyone to join you in VR as long as they're using a modern browser on their phone or PC. While it's still early days for the immersive web, it's clear that it will play a big role in shaping its future of VR. And it will do so by influencing how users consume content in and out of headsets and how developers approach creating content for VR. First, we believe the web will usher in a wealth of new content that's highly relevant for the user, such as 3D photos from your close friends or new interactive 360 experiences from established brands that you already engage with. This gives people more reasons to put on the headset and spend longer in VR. Next, instead of paying upfront or waiting for a large package to download before you can engage with an experience, the web is instantly accessible. And by reducing that upfront friction, we believe users are more likely to interact with a wider range of content and discover new experiences that they otherwise would not have tried. This is especially relevant for existing VR app developers, as we believe the immersive web could be far more effective than 2D videos or trailers when promoting VR applications. And finally, when the same piece of content can be played back across both VR and non-VR devices, the number of friends that you can share and connect with will increase dramatically. With a traditional app, the easiest way of showing your friends what you're seeing in VR is to take off your headset and put it on their face. But with the immersive web, sharing with your friends what you're seeing in VR and inviting them into a virtual space is as easy as sharing a link. For developers, the web promises to make building for VR more accessible than ever. By building on top of open standards and familiar web technologies, our partners have been able to leverage their existing web and mobile developers, some of, those, some of whom have no experience working in VR, to create high-quality immersive content. This has helped significantly reduce the cost of creating new content for VR. More importantly, the web-based VR content that is being created can reach a potential audience of billions across mobile, web, and VR headsets, giving developers a lot more bang for the buck that they are investing to create the content. And by harnessing immersive media, developers can better serve their users in 2D through valuable enhancements of existing experiences. Take the example of a hotel listing. Even on a mobile phone, people appreciate the ability to explore the entire space and to walk through it virtually versus scrolling through a series of 2D images. And these experiences are valuable for developers as well, whether through improved conversion because they're differentiated from content that's existing and out there today, or better engagement because people are spending more time exploring and interacting with the virtual space. And that's why we believe the web will be critical for the future of VR. It enables content to go beyond the headset and reach an audience that's much broader than what's available today. And it creates a virtuous cycle where our users are in VR, 
are sharing more with their friends out of VR, which in turn helps build awareness of all the amazing things that you can discover in headset, which then accelerates the adoption and growth of VR as a whole. To ensure that the web is a first-class citizen in VR, we're putting our weight behind two key projects at Oculus. The first is our commitment to build the best-in-class VR web browser in the form of Oculus Browser. And the second is React 360, an easy yet powerful web-based framework for creating VR applications and interactive 360 experiences. With Oculus Browser, the team is guided by three main themes. The first is to create an amazing user experience for consuming existing 2D web content. This requires us to leverage more of VR strengths, like an expanded field of view, while overcoming some of our current challenges, such as limited input. The second is to deliver best-in-class performance through the support of WebGL2, multi-view, and fixed foveated rendering. This ensures that our users across Gear VR, Oculus Go, and Oculus Quest can all enjoy smooth, high-quality, immersive web content without the need for a powerful gaming PC. Lastly is to work with our partners to start progressively enhancing existing web content to take advantage of VR. We envision a future where every major site is able to detect that a user is visiting from VR and present a VR-optimized version, similar to what sites are doing for mobile today. For React 360, which is available on GitHub, our roadmap can be summed up with three themes as well. The first is to create a tighter integration with Facebook so that developers can more easily publish their immersive web content to newsfeed and enable users to easily connect with their friends through the social graph. The second is to continue improving developer experiences to make it even easier for those not familiar with VR to quickly start building high-quality VR applications. And lastly is to provide a path for developers to take their web-based VR content built with React 360 and bring it into VR as a native application without any major modifications. Internally at Oculus, we are already using React to build and deploy our first-party experiences, such as the Oculus Store and Oculus Gallery and we look forward to giving third-party developers that capability in the near future. All of these efforts are in service of a mission to unite and unify the near infinite amount of content on the web today with the amazing capabilities of VR. By creating an easy path for web-based content to get into VR and take advantage of its strengths. It starts by making it seamless for any piece of 2D content to be brought into VR, either rendered through the Oculus browser or as a native VR app powered by React. Next, developers can easily make use of VR's expanded field of view with just a few simple modifications to the content layout. And with a few additional steps, they can further enhance the content by presenting it within an immersive scene and introduce simple event-driven interactions across 2D and 3D objects within that scene. And all of this is made more compelling when developers add the ability to instantly connect, share, and interact with your friends, regardless of what device they're using. These social connections can range from simple text-based messages to video chats to fully present virtual avatars all enabled by the existing open web standards out there today that can scale to billions of users. That's a quick glimpse into what we've been working on and where we think the immersive web is headed. We hope you will join us on this journey, and we look forward to working with you to build a future. Thank you.